Hello and welcome to AKA Our 80s Life and today we are going to show you filming locations from Dallas Season 2. Welcome to fabulous Las Vegas. Just kidding, we're actually in Dallas at the Hyatt Regency, but this hotel plays Las Vegas in season two, episode one. Yeah, Bobby and Pamela were going to the Cattlemen's Convention in Las Vegas, but if you look behind in the uh, in the video, you'll right actually here. see Reunion Tower. Yeah, so we know that they did not actually film in Las Vegas. They used some stock footage of the strip and then they cut straight to this hotel, which for those of us who are from Dallas was pretty hilarious. But it stood in for their hotel in Las Vegas. And remember, this is the part where Bobby is reunited with his long lost brother, Gary. While they're staying in Vegas, Bobby and Gary and Pam go eat at a restaurant. They filmed that scene at the Royal Coach Inn, but now, sadly, it's totally gone. Now, they would be eating at a Chick-fil-A. So the Royal Coach Inn was a huge hotel, and it encompassed this whole area, from the Chick-fil-A behind to all of these apartments. There's nothing there now, but I mean, there's no, there's no signs of it now. But this is actually where the cast and crew stayed during the filming for the first season or so of Dallas. Also, Victoria nicknamed it the Royal Roach because apparently they had a bit of a roach problem. Ew. Later they moved to the North Park Inn. This is Reunion Tower, but when I was a kid growing up in Dallas, we just called it the ball and it lights up at night, it does a cool light show. It's also featured pretty prominently all throughout the Dallas series. Now let's go up to the top and see where JR has a very important meeting. Yeah. We're going up. We are riding the elevator to what they call the Geo Deck. The top of the Reunion Tower. What are we expecting to find up here at the top of this tower? <laughs> the Red File. We are looking for the Red File. Mm -hmm. Now we're here on the observation deck of Reunion Tower, and in episode four, JR brings Willie Jogar and Jeb Ames here. They come down the stairs and they walk around the observation deck here, where you can see downtown Dallas. There. And this is the scene where he shows them the infamous red, the red file. file. So we brought the red file with yeah. us. So we're gonna check. So in the red file was the fake will that J.R. forged that was supposedly signed and made by Jock. J.R. was always scheming. Yeah, and it's kind of sad because obviously Jock would have to die in order for that document to become valid. So. And it cuts Bobby totally out. That's right. So there you go, the red file. That's scheming J.R. <laughs> yeah. Here at the base of Reunion Tower, there used to be a water feature. You can sort of tell here where there used to be a waterfall. And I think that this is where we see Pamela and her boss having meals. They've had a couple of lunches here. They made it look like a restaurant. I guess what they did was put some tables here to make it look like a restaurant. And then Pamela gets the phone call telling her that she needs to get to the hospital because Jock has had a heart attack.
In episode four, Jock has had a heart attack and he's been rushed to the local hospital. So the local hospital for Braddock um, is actually Medical City, Dallas. And what's hilarious is this is not a local regional hospital at all. It's, it's huge. huge. It's probably the biggest hospital in Dallas. But unfortunately, they're not able to treat him here because he needs a bypass. So they end up having to move him over to the Dallas Memorial Hospital, which we'll show you in a minute. Um, but right now we wanna show you how we can tell that the first one is Medical City. Only a few little clues. But look at the wall behind us. Do you see this grooved concrete? Now I used to work at this hospital. So when I spotted that behind them in the shot, in this episode, I knew this was Medical City because I recognize this, it's very distinctive. It's only on the older buildings, they've added a ton more buildings to this hospital. But I think they rushed him here into Care Tower A around this entrance. I'm not sure the exact location, because again, it's changed a lot. It's supposed to be the emergency room. I doubt they use the real emergency room, but somewhere around here is where they filmed. They also use Medical City for the interior shots and for the atrium. And a little small little extra fact, our daughter was born here. She was. Hi Zoe. <laughs> hospital but they call it Dallas Memorial Hospital in the show in episode 9 this is the second hospital where Jock is brought to have his bypass surgery also in this episode this is when Willie Joe and Jeb come rolling in and JR standing out front and they're talking to JR because they want to see the red file that's really super inappropriate consider Jock's in the hospital right now I know they're right outside the hospital hey man show us the red, show file. Us the red file and Bobby gets mad because he's like guys this is not a place to do business here at the hospital if you're watching Dallas with a keen eye you'll notice this big rock near the pathway to the entrance of the hospital they've moved it a little bit but it's still here Renaissance Tower and this was Ewing Oil. One of the things that always cracks me up in the show is, is when they get to Ewing Oil, they just pull right up in the front, just park their car there and just walk in. That's not realistic in downtown Dallas. That would never happen. Ewing Oil remains here at Renaissance Tower for the next eight seasons and then it moves again. So it actually was in three different locations throughout filming. Behind us is the Veritex Bank building. It's 3131 Turtle Creek. Now we got an insider tip from a Facebook friend that told us her mom worked in this building and this is where they filmed the interiors for Ewing Oil. I believe they used this building way up there in one of the upper offices to film season two interiors only of Ewing Oil. I think this because if you look closely in the background, the view from the window isn't right for them to be downtown. You can actually see downtown Dallas, but it's far away. You can clearly see Turtle Creek Park and all the greenery right outside the window. So we know they're not downtown. I think this is it. Here's one more clue to confirm this location. Check out the elevators. There are three of them as seen in the show. The distinctive travertine walls between the elevators looks exactly the same as this current picture taken in the Veritex bank lobby.
In episode three, Old Acquaintances, Bobby comes here to Turtle Creek Park to talk to Jenna, his old flame. And you can see the bridge visible right behind us there as they're walking along the pathway next to the creek. Later they have a picnic down by the creek and you can see the trees down here along the creek bank. And this is where Bobby asked Jenna if Charlie is his daughter and she's very evasive about it. In episode six, Pam meets her ex-husband, Ed Haynes, here at Turtle Creek as well. I guess Turtle Creek is the place to come if you want to meet up with an ex-lover, right? In season two it is. Behind us is Preston Hollow Elementary School, and this is from episode three, where Bobby comes to Charlie's school to meet Jenna. Yeah, but he brings along Pamela. I don't think Jenna liked that too much because she's his old flame and she's trying to get him back. <laughs> Behind us is one main place. This is where Cliff Barnes works for the OLM. That's the Office of Land Management and he is out to get those Ewing. He parks his car right here in front, which again, not very realistic, but that's how they did it back then. Last night we were lucky enough to get to stay in one main at the Weston Hotel. Yeah, we spent the night and we celebrated our 25th anniversary and the Weston was really nice. here at one main place at a restaurant called The Patio. And there's no restaurants around here at all anymore, but it would have been right in this area. There also would have been a fountain here that's shown prominently in the shot, but there's no fountain. After Cliff and Pamela have lunch together, there used to be an escalator right here, and Cliff was coming down the escalator, and this is where he runs into Bobby and Jenna when they're coming out of the mall when they've been shopping together. While here in Dallas, Keith and I stayed at the West End downtown. It's a really nice hotel, but it's only been a hotel for a few years. It's actually part of one main place where they did a lot of filming from Dallas. And one of the scenes is JR on the phone right behind me in our lobby. Of course, there's not a pay phone there anymore. leave one main place we see them leave here but what's hilarious is later the next scene they pull up in their Mercedes at Ewing Oil but guess what guys Ewing Oil is right across the street so they acted like they were driving to their back to their office but in actuality they could have just walked it was across the street movie magic <laughs> I see what you did there Dallas now we Sanger Harris store. This was a famous department store in Dallas from 1961 until 1987. But in the show, they just call it the store. In season two and three, this is where Pamela works at the Sanger Harris or the store. As you can see, it's no longer a Sanger Harris department store. It's now actually the headquarters for Dallas Area Rapid Transit or DART. There's a train right there. The DART train station is here on Acker Street. It's very loud and busy here compared to how it probably was back in 1980. A famous scene that happens here is 
Pamela's ex-husband tracks her down here at the store where she works and then they leave the store and we see them walking this way down the street, Acker Street, but we see the sign here, Pacific. It's no longer a through street because now it's where the train goes. They left behind the um, engraved thing here on the pillars that says Sanger Harris with their little flower logo. So there are some remnants. Also, all the Singer Harris stores had like these really beautiful mosaic tiles with distinctive archways, and you'll still notice some of those archways are still there. But you'll see these little mosaics. They would have been like blues and browns and all different colors. They kept the tile here on the building, but it looks like they now have a black finish on it there. Aww, you painted over it, it looks like. So it looks different, but you can kind of tell that this was definitely the Sanger Harris store. We also see the store in episode five, Black Market Baby, when Sue Ellen takes Rita shopping, the young pregnant girl whose baby she's going to buy. Wait, what? Sue Ellen tries to buy a baby? Yep, you heard that right. Sue Ellen meets with attorney Buzz Connors and arranges to purchase Rita's baby for $15,000. But first, let's back up a bit. In episode five, Cliff Barnes and Buzz Connors are talking on this corner here. So this is the corner of Commerce and Hervé, and we figured this out because behind us, you can see Neiman Marcus. It's still a Neiman Market store. We might have to do some shopping. Oh boy. <laughs> Point, we see Cliff and Buzz are walking and talking and they make this block it's actually two blocks but on the show it makes it seem like one block and then they run into Sue Ellen, Sue Ellen. <laughs> This used to be the bicycle bar, Gatsby's bicycle bar, and that's actually where Buzz is meeting Sue Ellen. But now it's a restaurant called Over Easy. This is the first time that Cliff and Sue Ellen meet. And she says, you're much more attractive than your reputation. And he says, you're far too pretty to be a Ewing. <laughs> Sue Ellen and Buzz eat lunch at Gatsby's Bicycle Bar. Here's how it looked back then. And here's how it looks today. Will Sue Ellen get the baby she wants? Is Pamela still married to Ed Haynes? What happens when Lucy runs away from home? 